Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's Cisco part two, part two of the webinars, The Journey to SASE and Multi-Cloud. So for today's part two, the title is Get SASE with Cisco SD-WAN and Cloud Security. My name is Gen Hao. I'm an SD-WAN sales specialist at Cisco, and I'll be your host for the next one and a half hours. Just to recap, in our part one of the journey to SASE and multi-cloud, we talk about the why. The why we need to start the journey to SASE. In today's session, we're going to share on the what. What form the Cisco SASE solutions? Presenting today in today's session, I actually have two key speakers. First is Shamil. Uh, Shamil is my is our Cisco EPJC SE managers for SD WAN product. And my second speaker, Syed, our Cisco ASEAN Cybersecurity Product Sales Specialist as well. But before I hand over the session to Shamil and Syed, I wanted to cover some basic housekeeping matters. If you have any questions for our speakers and our panelists, please submit your question through the Q&A chat panel found on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. Our speakers and panelists will be addressing them live during the Q&A section as much as possible. And most important thing, at the end of the session, please take a moment to read and provide your feedback on the presentations. If you encounter any technical or audio difficulties during the webinar, don't worry, please be assured that the on-demand recording will be made available to you after today's live session. Okay, so without further ado, I would like to hand over the session to my first speaker, Shamil. Shamil, over to you. I'm a Secure Access Service Edge. Right now, uh, Secure Access Service Edge, in other words, actually uh, also uh, say SaaS, SASE. Uh, SASE uh, solution, and uh, uh, what does it mean actually, how you basically bring your traffic into the internet or to the rest of the sites actually on securely? Uh, how, what is the edge solution? What edge solution actually you put it there, and how do you secure the uh, traffic to the remote sites? So uh, before I move into the uh, SASE portion, I want to basically give a little bit of overview on uh, how the SD-WAN works and how we integrate our solution with the uh, uh, SASE, right? So uh, first of all, I think we all agreed uh, there is a movement of the application from the data center to the cloud locations. Uh, we used to have approximately about 80% traffic that's going to the internal, that is to a data center, and a 20% is going to the uh, internet. That, that's about 10 years ago. And now we have moved into the opposite. Approximately 80% is going into the internet, and there is a 20% is going into the uh, into the uh, your data center. So the uh, concept of the data center gateway is no longer in use, and we need to make sure whatever that we are sending to the internet also secure, and also we should not compromise on the performance. So for the mobile users or the users are accessing the SaaS in fact, services or the web browsing, we need to make sure their applications are secure or their connectivity is secure, and also at the same time, they get the correct performance getting into the, uh, those applications. So I want to give a little bit of an introduction on like how we support on a, a SASE solution and also how, what is our architecture on a, a secure SD-WAN solution. Now, if you talk about on SD WAN to any vendor or any customer, right? Uh, there, there is a certain things that SD WANs provide. Number one is application visibility. Now, second, actually, multiple circuit connectivity, a path selection between the application. They also talk about direct internet connectivity and centralized management and monitoring. Now, that is the the past SD WAN. I would say I, I want to call it that is SD WAN we used to have. But in future, actually, what is, comes to the SD-WAN, what do you see on the uh, left hand, like the right hand side, the box, right? So uh, number one, actually, what you need to have, uh, what you need to have, you need to make sure that your SD-WAN solution actually has a, uh, the, the architecture that built to uh, future applications and also the future connectivity. 
you should be able to have uh, multiple connectivity connecting to the HD devices, and it has a full mesh connectivity from, uh, from a branch office to the data center, and also it has a seamlessly connecting to the, your cloud services. And also, have, you have to have a best of the bridge solution, actually, or the a hardware solution. It could be able to basically connect it to the Q1, E1 connectivity, or it could be able to connect it to the LT, connective, LT devices or LT networks, and also it could be a, a software solution that will be able to basically install your uh, the cloud edge solution, or in other words, software VNX solutions. And also, it should give the single plane of glass for monitoring, management, and analytics for all your network from the from your branch office to the data center and the cloud services, right? It, to, it should be integrated on voice and video, right? So you have a seamless connectivity between your branch offices to your cloud services, and also you have access to the voice and video rather than having a separate network for the voice and video. Uh, then comes to the uh, bit of a, a cloud connectivity and optimizing the cloud. We know most of the customers are moving into the SaaS solution. So how do you basically optimize a SaaS application, right? And find out the correct path for going into the SaaS application, whether it's underlay or overlay, find out the best path and cut over the traffic into different connectivity. Infrastructure services, how do you basically securely connectivity from your branch office to the infrastructure services on uh, whether it's uh, Azure, AWS, or the Google, uh, any kind of all the third party uh, cloud providers. And also the cloud uh, transit route. Let me talk about the cloud transit route on the next slide. But uh, this gives you actually agility for you to connect in from a branch office to another branch office to the uh, cloud vendor, right? And next comes to the security portion. So we have a cloud and on-prem security. Uh, so on-prem security that provided from the edge device itself and the cloud security is provided by the umbrella solution. So this is a portion of the uh, SASE. And, and also, most of the customers are looking to the securing the network from a compartment, a compartment and slicing their a network, or in other words, segmentation their network, right? Uh, many customers want to differentiate, or in other words, differentiate, uh, many customers want to segment their network to their workloads. Uh, because if one workload basically compromise, it doesn't, it doesn't affect actually the rest of the workload in the network. Finally, comes into the multi-domain area. So how do you basically seamlessly have a connectivity between your land site and to the, your data center? And how do you basically put a policies and a telemetries between your land site to the uh, data center? Now, Cisco is in a very good position because we have a SDA solution that's on a campus environment and SD-WAN on the WAN side and also the uh, ACI on the, on the data center side. So we can, see, we can integrate these three components, and you have a single pane of glass to basically monitor and manage from end-to-end -end for the customer. Okay. So uh, moving into the multi-cloud and the multi-cloud optimization. First of all, uh, how the uh, vendors connect into the cloud. First of all, they use uh, uh, devices in the cloud, or in other words, uh, software devices in the cloud. The branch offices will connect into the, the cloud. But the way we do it actually a little differently. What we did actually, we create a, a fabric between the clouds for you. So your branch offices and your data centers are connected to the fabric. So if you're connected to a single cloud, you will be able to access to the rest of the cloud as long as you have connectivity between the uh, cloud environment. And also, if you are connected to a certain branch, say for example, if you have a branch in Hong Kong that you want to basically connect it to your data center in Singapore, you will be able to carry your traffic through the a cloud provider's backbone to Singapore and break it out from Singapore. So you know, all your branch of us has to connect it to the local cloud provider, uh, closest cloud provider, and that uh, the cloud provider you can carry the traffic uh, between the branches and your data center. At the same time, you will be able to access to the uh, services that you are hosted in the uh, cloud environment. And it could be a multi-cloud environment, don't have to be a single cloud, some areas that you host on AWS, and if you have a certain analytics application, the Google is the best option to basically host the uh, analytics. So to connect the devices, 
also we need to have a edge uh, devices or connect the uh, SD WAN. We need to have edge devices. So um, Cisco provides a complete solution for you, whether you are connecting on a uh, IoT device or the uh, ATM. You have a, a module that's connected on IoT. That's a hardened solution, and it can be deployed in outside, right? And and or if you are connecting on a branch office, you have a certain products that connect on the branch office on the ISR series or the Catalyst series. And also, if you are in the data center, you have a ASR series and the Catalyst series that connect into the, uh, the from the data center. Also, if you need to connect it on an LTE, so we have a multiple option actually. One is a module. Other one is actually gateway, LTE gateway, external point that you can use an Ethernet connection to connect it to the uh, external gateway. If you have a certain virtualization on your branch office, you can use a, a virtual edge uh, router. So the edge router can be deployed on your virtual uh, network in your branch office, and then you'll be able to basically connect it to your network. And also we have a, uh, the ENCS solution that basically a VNS solution. If you want to basically run the, uh, all your uh, routing solution in a single platform, uh, that will be able to uh, do that also. And the final, uh, the edge computing solution. So edge computing solution will provide you the complete networking components and also your services, uh, servers, into the uh, single devices. So uh, uh, I have seen this one actually uh, taking a, 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 lot of, a lot of momentum at this moment. Customers asking actually they want to reduce the number of servers uh, in the data center uh, and the branch office. So the edge computing will be able to basically reduce the, the components that you have in your data center uh, branch office, uh, putting uh, everything into a, a two single uh, devices. So let's look at a little bit of uh, what is SESI, right? And first of all, why is SESI important? Now, I mentioned earlier that the majority of the traffic is going into the internet now, right? Whether it's a SaaS, infrastructure services, or your private cloud, or the browsing application, right? So uh, our estimate, roughly about 80% of the customers, 80% of the traffic actually moving into the internet. Some of the customers are still in the staging stage that basically they, are, they, are, they have a data center, but they have an uh, Office 65 connecting to the network. So, uh, and you will see that the, that traffic is growing and the more traffic will be uh, shipped into the uh, internet in, in, in the next couple of years to come. So the best option actually to support this one, we need to make sure that we have a direct connection from the branch office to the internet and also we need to secure those traffic that go into the internet. And in addition to that, we also need to make sure that we don't compromise on the performance of those applications. So whether it's connecting to the uh, data center or whether it's connecting to the SaaS application, we need to provide the correct performance or correct SLA for those applications. So that's where the SASE comes into the play. So what is exactly SASE? And the Gartner has a definition on the SASE. It's basically a combination of your software-defined WAN solution and also the combination of your, uh, uh, the security environment, right? So uh, if you just a little bit of deeper into the uh, current uh, market or current vendors, they, they categorize into the uh, two aspects. One, actually, the software-defined vendors are basically coming from the routing uh, environment. If you look at the Viptela, is coming from the routing environment. And also there are other vendors actually focus on the routing. They're strong on the routing environment. There are, up, there are another type of vendors uh, strong on the security environment, right? Uh, they have a very good security solution. They, they came from the security back, uh, background, but uh, unfortunately they don't have a good uh, routing solution. So what does Cisco does? Cisco took a different approach on the, on the SASE solution. So we combined our solution together. We combined the, the best of the breed SD-WAN solution that has a fully capable of routing solution that you can sit on any data center by any complex network. And also we have the Cisco umbrella solution that the best of the breed security solution. And we combine those two together. So in Cisco, we have a full-fledged SD-WAN solution and a best of the breed security solution together on the SASE. So we have an advantage 
compared to the any vendor in the market. So I want to go over one more slide, actually discussing about the what are the options that are available. Now, SASE or the cloud cloud security, it provides uh, uh, access or provides the security for the the traffic going into the internet or traffic going into the SaaS application. What about the traffic that going into the data center? How do you scan those traffic? How do you basically uh, uh, control those traffic or to the other branch office? Or the users coming from the external or partners that connect into your network, how do you control all those traffic? So in Cisco, we have a three options for you. One, we have a ground security. Uh, that is the portion of our firepower is put into the, our SD-WAN solution. Again, it's a Vesodor Beat SD-WAN solution and also the Vesodor Beat firewall that we have, and we combine these two together and we have a edge security. So any traffic that going into the internet, you can basically use the cloud security. Any traffic going between the sites or coming from the partners, you'll be able to use for the, the, the branch security. The other option that we talk about on the cloud security. So all the traffic that going into the internet, you can control from a central location. Uh, that's a cloud security that uh, provided by the umbrella solution. We also have another option on a, a colo site. Uh, you can create a colo site or the multiple colo site. We're also working with the service provider to provide these colo sites. So you can send the traffic to a colo site and the colo site basically provide you the best of the grid solution. So for example, your organization has a certain uh, uh, certain requirement. Uh, it has to go through a certain type of firewall, so maybe dual firewall solution. It has to go through a certain IPS solution and the DLP solution. Uh, no vendor will provide you the whole solution that you require. So in, in this scenario, we can make sure that whatever the solution that you need it, it can be installed. The colo is basically a virtual instance. So you can install on a multiple instance on there and we can, we can service chain the traffic actually going through this environment into the internet. And similarly, if you have the partners who want to come into the network, they can come through the Colo solution and they will go through the security components and come back into the Colo solution. So it is important actually how we deploy the Colo, right? Colo need to be deployed on a multiple location. Say for example, region, you can have a two Colo solution. Say APAC, you can have in Singapore and Japan, your Colo solution. And this can be a load balance, and also it can be uh, communicate. It can be work as a redundant solution. One of the site goes down, colo site goes down. The all the other uh, site, all the sites should be connected to the second colo site, right? So in Cisco, the bottom line in Cisco, we have a multiple solution for you. We have a static solution that we go through the umbrella. We have a brown security solution, and also we have a, a colo solution that we can secure your traffic going into the internet and also at the same time traffic going into your partners. So from this point of onwards, I will uh, hand over to Said. Said is a product sales uh, specialist in cybersecurity in Cisco. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Shamil. So, um... So I'm, I'm gonna cover the security element of uh, SASE. All right, so uh, we start off with Cisco Umbrella. So you might have heard of Cisco Umbrella in one form or the other. Uh, it started out as a solution that we acquired from OpenDNS, and uh, now it has transformed into a full-fledged secure internet gateway delivered from the cloud as a SaaS solution. So the idea behind the Cisco Umbrella uh, product is that it is a multifunctional cloud security solution in line with what Gartner uh, suggests for a cloud-based security solution that is microservices in architecture. So as you can see, we try to make connectivity simple wherever you are, whether it's from an SD-WAN network or outside of the SD-WAN network, and provide security in different elements. So we start off with DNS layer security, we then go into a full proxy solution, a cloud-delivered firewall, some CASB solutions because we see we do see a lot of transitions of people to cloud applications. And one of the key factors that the Cisco Umbrella solution gives to our customers is the capability for you to see interactive threat intelligence. And then we wrap this out with uh, SecureX. And if you have any other security solutions as part of your security stack, whether Cisco-based or third-party-based, 
you can actually see all of that come together with the SecureX uh, Cloud Native Platform. So let's spend a little bit of time understanding uh, what Umbrella actually brings. So in terms of the key capabilities, Umbrella serves as that secure on-ramp to the internet, wherever your users are, whatever devices they are coming in from. The first pillar that we want to focus on is complete visibility. Uh, while the SD-WAN solution brings the visibility uh, from branch to branch, anything going out to the internet is then seen and captured by Cisco Umbrella. So on the visibility side, on and off the corporate network, whether it's web traffic or any other non-web traffic, we see that, we log that into a centralized dashboard. Based on the traffic that's coming through, we also map it out to applications that people are using. So it's easier, it's much easier to understand uh, what that traffic is all about. Instead of just looking at URLs or domains specifically, we map it out to applications and we map it out to um, content categories, right? So uh, in terms of which devices are requesting access to these destinations on the internet, we see that as well. We do complete SSL decryption or selective SSL decryption based on what you want to do. And we can also detect things like shadow IT. So based on applications that people are accessing to, you can have an understanding of what applications are more risky, what applications are potentially malicious, and who is using what so that you can find out about this shadow IT use case. So that's on visibility. The middle pillar over here that you see on this slide is with regards to protection. I think when it comes to security, security efficacy is extremely important. But with that, we also have to take a look at productivity. All right, so we cannot slow down a device just because we want to ensure uh, a high amount of security that is put in place. So with this, what we do is we spend, uh, we, we build the architecture based on a couple of different engines. So it starts off with the DNS layer security. Once the DNS request is resolved, we then, uh, and nothing is blocked, we then see the full traffic that's coming through our data center. And uh, we then inspect it based on where the destination is, what URLs it's going to, whether it's going to any file download sites. And for that file itself, we inspect it completely based on a couple of different engines, uh, antivirus as well as anti-malware. We can do sandboxing, and we can also inspect on non-web traffic, right? Just to cover a broader base of things that are going out to the internet. And uh, with threat intelligence that is at your fingertips, you can also dive deeper into why the blocks are seen this way or why something is not actually blocked, right? Because when it comes to things on the internet, it's constantly evolving. So there is that capability for you to see and then do some form of control, which brings us to the third pillar. So on the control side, we can do it based on domains, based on URLs, ports and protocols, specific applications, categorization, and even to tenant control. So if you are using Office 365 or G Suite in your environment, you can actually restrict access to only the corporate sanctioned tenants. And I'll get into more details in a couple of slides, right? The, the idea here is, it serves as that secure on-ramp to the internet. Right? Anything that's going on to the internet, we see it, and then you can enforce some form of policy onto it. And this is backed by uh, threat intelligence from Talos, which looks at uh, the various um, components of the internet. So we start off with DNS layer security. First. DNS layer security is something that is extremely efficient in terms of providing that first line of defense to whatever network that you are currently working on. So deploying enterprise-wide only takes minutes because there typically is that central location where you make a change to point your DNS recursive service to our solution, right? From there, once that is done, we can um, see the request, we log the request accordingly, and then we inspect it based on the what policy has been turned on. The first thing is on track. So we block domains associated with malware, phishing, C2 callbacks, and a variety of different uh, uh, other threat um, categories. And if something matches our block list, we then return back a block page. It's as easy as that. If something is not blocked, and then we inspect it further. Certain domains actually present something that is slightly more suspicious, right? So the domains itself are typically not malicious, 
but we have seen certain URLs from within those domains that have been used in certain malware campaigns. In those cases, that less than 5% of DNS requests that we see, we can actually automatically subject it to a proxy. This is what we term as a selective proxy. The idea here is to stop threats at its earliest point, and if your network already has some form of compromise inside, it will then contain that particular malware, right? And if it is not related to threats, we can also do blocking based on categories or applications, like what I mentioned. And ultimately, if nothing is blocked, it will just return back the actual IP address of that destination, right? Once that is done, we then move to the next step. So if the traffic is now established, the connection is established and the traffic is now traversing to the internet, we can actually redirect it to our cloud-based proxy. And over here, what we do is a couple of different things to, to inspect the traffic based on um, few, uh, a few other different types of engines. So the first thing that we do is we inspect it and we log it based on the full URL, not just the domains. Okay? So granular visibility, in terms of where your users are going. And if it is going to a file download site, every single file can actually be inspected for threats. We currently use a couple of antivirus engines in our cloud, as well as our anti-malware engine that is called AMP, right? And uh, the AMP engine itself is used by a variety of different security solutions on the email, on um, the IPS, uh, as well as on the UTM boxes, right? So all of this intelligence is actually shared to make the database a lot more um, intelligent, right? So that we can, we can cover a broader base of uh, malware that we see. On files itself, we can also enforce based on the file type. So we inspect the files based on its true file type so that even if that extension is changed, we can actually block off things like executables if it is part of your policy to block it off. And uh, from the uh, proxy, the cloud proxy, we can also do granular application filtering as well as track grids, file sandboxing, right? So multiple services that are part of this single engine. And how you want to connect it is um, in a variety of ways. You can do it based on the standard proxy methods, which is through pack files or proxy chain, or you can build a tunnel from the SD-WAN box, which will then cover all the traffic that's coming through, right? All the port 80 and port 443 traffic is coming through. And we inspect it based on the policy that you have built. And the last piece that we take very seriously is in the form of roaming users, right? So uh, using agents that we can deploy on our customer environment, we can actually redirect any of this traffic to our umbrella cloud as well. And if you see this uh, green, this green box over on the right hand side, we also have direct peering connections with the major sets vendors so as to ensure that there is the lowest latency possible for our customers' traffic, right? Again, I, I, I strongly emphasize that security should not be a hindrance to performance. And that, that is something that uh, Umbrella brings to the table with our SaaS solution. On the cloud-delivered firewall side, we have this extra component really to cover the non-web traffic, right? Because if we see traffic that is going out to the internet, Yes, DNS is the first step of going out to the internet. Web is um, a majority of the traffic, but we see more and more use cases of uh, applications that are not using port 80 and port 443. So using the cloud delivered firewall, we can actually block high risk non-web applications and protocols. We can detect layer seven applications and uh, do some form of filtering over there. And uh, we, so use cases are in the form of things like uh, detecting Tor browsers, or if you don't want any FTP file transfers traversing over through the internet, you can actually do all those kind of enforcement straight from the umbrella uh, SaaS based solution. And the last piece of the puzzle is with regards to CASB. So when it comes to CASB, I think more and more customers are looking at CASB solutions because they are migrating a lot of this services to the cloud. So cloud applications that are being used have to have some form of security inside because either uh, in the form of inline proxy where traffic is going to those applications 
In this sense, Umbrella provides the solution based on application visibility and blocking, where we would map out the risk profile based on business risk, vendor risk, and what type of um, application this is all about. We can also do it based on granular application control. Tenant controls are specific to Office 365 and G Suite tenants, where you restrict uh, access only to corporate uh, sanctioned tenants. And we are also adding in functionalities for things like DLP, inline DLP. That's on inline proxy CASB. The other side of the coin for CASB is what you see on the left hand side. So out of band CAS CASB actually looks at the CASB natively, integrates using APIs, because some cloud applications out there would speak to other cloud applications natively cloud to cloud. Right, so it does not traverse through your network, but it is doing something. So some form of monitoring is also capable over there, where we have user behavior monitoring um, uh, as well as alerting. We have the capability to detect sensitive data that is stored in your cloud repositories. We have the capability to um, to break off the controls for open authentication apps should there be something that is related to shadow IT. And on the umbrella side, we have also customers who are already testing uh, cloud malware detection. So in this case, what we are looking at is not only sensitive data that is resting on cloud repositories, but also threats that are living there that might accidentally be shared to other people. Right? So CASB is in, the, in two forms, so out of band as well as inline proxy. And in terms of how this comes together with the whole SD-WAN solution, Right. The secure cloud edge, as we call it, really needs to function as one. So SD-WAN providing the connectivity between site to site, Umbrella providing the security on uh, anything that's going out to the internet, and we can expand this functionality with additional tools like uh, Zero Trust. Right. So if we're looking at solutions like Duo that adds in posturing, multi-factor authentication, as well as remote access as a service, all those capabilities would come in on a centralized platform that can be delivered as a SaaS based model. But let's stick to security, right? So when we talk about security, I think one of the most fundamental um, things that we should have in mind is security efficacy. So security efficacy would bring the best bang to the buck for a security solution that somebody has invested in, right? And we are proud to say that in a recent AV test report that was released just in October, all right, so just uh, last month, it, for the second time in a row, um, AV Test, which is an independent testing house based out of Germany, has positioned Umbrella as a leader in security efficacy, providing the highest level of threat protection in both DNS layer security when comparing with other DNS uh, security vendors, as well as the secure web gateways uh, functionality as compared to other cloud proxy vendors. Right. And if you want to access um, the full report, the link is over here. Uh, but the, the slides will be shared across with uh, everyone at a later time. But you can take a look and dive down a little bit more into the report. But just as a high level, here are some snapshots of what was seen. Right. So the efficacy testing, uh, so in this particular test that AV test did, they tested on two things. Firstly, efficacy threat testing for both DNS and SWG as well as false positive testing, right? So on the threat side, they actually injected about 3,572 malicious samples and see what the solutions could pick up in terms of a percentage. On the DNS layer side, if you take a look at, in terms of percentage, there is umbrella could actually detect about 70.69% of all of those malicious samples and if you compare this to the other DN, the, um, DNS security vendors out there, it's far ahead of it. And if you look at a full proxy solution where we're looking at the, the secure internet gateway, this percentage of detection actually goes up to 96.39%, right? Again, points away from the closest competitors of um, uh, that you see on this particular slide, right? And, but something interesting, if you look at them differently, yes, you see the numbers and how they compare. But if you look at them together, Umbrella DNS security alone actually provides better threat efficacy than what Netscope and Akamai brings to the table with their full proxy solution. 
And this threat efficacy is actually very close to what Palo Prisma brings to the table, right? So just something to keep in mind, right? Uh, while proxy is something that is full-fledged, a lot more flexible in terms of how you can deploy the policy, DNS actually can do this in a very efficient way, but very simple manner, right? So just something to think about. And when we look at false positive testing, right, I think this is something extremely key as well. In recent POVs that we have seen uh, with customers, that there were questions that come back on why a specific um, uh, destination was picked out as malicious by someone else, but not by umbrella, right? And uh, the key to that is that domains and URLs are constantly evolving. Right, so sometimes it could be used as part of a malware campaign. Sometimes it actually can be removed uh, uh, because it's benign. Right, so this block list needs to constantly evolve. And a testament to this was what was done with AV test, and they showed that false positive sample testing actually gave a very low percentage detection for both uh, for the umbrella solution in both these categories. Right, so over here, lower percentage is better than higher percentage. Right? So all in all, final thoughts on this is that there is a good, better, best approach to security. And with every security solution, um, whether it's web solution or you're looking at security across the board, there is always a best practice to adopt a layered approach to security, right? So if you look at DNS, it's good. It, it's easy to deploy across the board, wherever your network is, uh, wherever your user is connected to, um, and it provides a level of security. If you want to look at just full proxy solution, there is that capability as well, which provides a more granular uh, form of protection as well as policy enforcement. But if you combine all of this into a unified SASE solution, or if you're looking at security, uh, the secure internet gateway solution, that is the best approach, right? Because we are adopting a layered approach to security. And how does these two things come together? So Shamil spoke, um, touched on the SD-WAN networking component. I touched on the security side of things. We are the first, actually, because we are big in both these spaces, right? Uh, Cisco as a vendor has been doing networking and especially routing for, for decades, right? And uh, on the security space, in terms of revenue, we still are the biggest in uh, globally, right? Uh, if we're looking at all of the security products that we have in our portfolio, and what we do is we are bringing this SASE solution together. So we start off with Cisco SD-WAN. We have Cisco Umbrella looking at cloud security. And with a single unified package called Cisco DNA Premier, we have converged this into a single offer, right? Both in terms of licensing as well as rollout. What we bring to the table over here in terms of a secure SD-WAN uh, plus cloud security solution is that well, you look at the SD-WAN fabric, right? The interconnectivity, uh, performance, latency between uh, of routing is handled by SD-WAN, and security is handled by Umbrella. So when you have this combined solution, you have benefits such as hands-off automation, the capability to deploy IPsec tunnels across thousands of branches automatically, right? So what this means is that when you deploy those SD-WAN solution, it's already licensed for cloud security. When it gets connectivity to the internet, it can then establish uh, an IPsec tunnel to the lowest latency data center that, uh, from where that particular edge device is. We provide top-notch protection, as you can see, uh, if, you, if you saw before, with uh, security efficacy and a variety of multi-services that are delivered as part of this single SaaS-based solution. We're simplifying management in terms of policy push. You can actually do um, a push down umbrella policies from vManage. And if you're looking at different types of deployments, whether it's on headquarters, branch office, or a roaming user, everything can be deployed from a single pane of glass. And when it comes to inspection and controls, we are constantly evolving what we bring to the table uh, in terms of how we are doing it. Uh, so that there is the complete or holistic security protection for all of our customers. So just on how, just, just a few slides on how we go about doing this integration, right? So the first step is on simple onboarding. 
when you have DNA Premier as, uh, that you license uh, that particular solution for, there is no more the need uh, for months for you to deploy secure SD-WAN. The SD-WAN edge devices are automatically registered to Umbrella, right? So on Umbrella Cloud security side, we know that this edge device will be using the Umbrella service. There is no need for you to manually enter any API keys because the connection is automatically established. Oh, uh, uh, the onboarding process is already done. So the device and the Umbrella and the SaaS based solution actually know of each other and are kind of friendly with each other, right? So the automatic provisioning of uh, the edge device is already done, right? While this was easy before with APIs, now we've just made it simpler. And the next piece is on tunnel creation. So now that the edge device and the SAS security solution knows of each other, we can now create the tunnels automatically, right? So what this means is if you are deploying 100 different uh, edge devices across the country, you want to roll out quickly, right? You can actually do so in speed because all of this tunnel creation and onboarding processes are taken care for you. So this allows you to quickly set up IPsec tunnels to Umbrella when, and then you can use templates to push down those policies for security, which allows you to quickly deploy uh, multiple uh, devices in different locations for using this particular uh, SASP solution, right? So we've made it simple and we have partners that have already rolled this uh, kind of solution out for their customers globally. Uh, where they come back to us and they feedback that this actually works, right? So that's the most important thing. So those are on the solutions itself. Let's talk a little bit about the use cases, right? So what do, what are some of the sassy use cases? So you heard about SD-WAN, you heard about cloud security. So the first use case that we want to address, of course, is securing the SD-WAN enabled branch. Right. So the edge devices would take care of the connection piece, whether it's Gaptella or it's Meraki, the connection piece is taken care of where they would look towards improving the user experience. Right? Application-based routing controls allows um, specific traffic that is directed on specific links so that there is the continuous connection that is established. Right? Monitoring all of those links in terms of link latency, jitter, performance, all of this is taken care by the SD-WAN devices in terms of the SD-WAN fabric. So connection is, of course, very, very key. Next one, the next piece is about secure uh, security, right? So whether you're doing security on box uh, between the edge devices or you are adding in more granular security with the cloud security-based solution, looking at everything that's going out to the internet, and then having the flexibility of um, of managing which application should be inspected and not. Okay? So security is there. If you want to extend this further, with a lot of people working and in distributed offices, right? You might want to deploy additional security mechanisms like Duo, which helps with adaptive MFA or multi-factor authentication, simplified posturing, and so on. And AMP as a, as a secure endpoint solution to do antivirus uh, as well as anti-malware and the capability of how you holistically look at security. We have a vast portfolio that is deeply integrated so that it is much easier for our customers to adopt. Ultimately, the idea is to minimize the risk. And the last piece is about automation and operation, right? So we do this in two forms. Firstly, uh, with regards to deployment, policying, and uh, if you are looking at security specifically, we are doing this with SecureX. Right? SecureX is this cloud-native platform that allows the integration of multiple security solutions for you to be able to do orchestration or automation, as well as having that unified single pane of glass for all things security. Right? We've built this on an open architecture, so it's all API based. And uh, if you want to integrate security solutions, of course, that is out of the box, but third party solutions, we also have a marketplace where there is integration out of the box, right? And because it's all fully API based, you can actually leverage on those APIs to connect uh, third party solutions into the SecureX platform. 
And the best part is that it is inclusive of any of the security solutions that you might buy today. Idea here again, improve CapEx and OpEx and to simplify the whole experience for our customers. And if we extend this a little bit further, right? So we saw uh, the, the securing the SD-WAN where networks would come in. We can extend this functionality to our remote workers as well, right? Important thing over here is that in this kind of pandemic situation, we see a lot of customers actually asking for you know, remote workforce-based solutions, right? And the best way for someone to adopt this is through a SaaS-based solution, right? Reason why people are adopting, um, are looking for security solutions for their remote workforce, right? Statistics show that 68% of remote uh, users are a source of a recent breach because when there was that sudden transition to people working from home, the threat actors also acted accordingly, right? They know that this was a gap because how people used to deploy security was all very network focused, right? They invested heavily in the headquarters and ensured that everybody tunneled back into a centralized location. Now that everybody is going to the cloud or, you know, there was that choke in bandwidth because there wasn't enough um, uh, VPN capability. Now there is that gap. So how do you address those gaps, right? That's one thing. The next thing is about deployment. So 78% of organizations actually say that remote workers are the hardest to protect because you have to deploy it based on an agent-based solution. And how you roll this out can be quite challenging especially when everybody suddenly went out, right? Suddenly made this change. So you combine this with statistics of percentages of people moving into a mobile kind of environment, a SaaS-based security solution is extremely key here, right? So this is where Umbrella adds additional value. While we, would, uh, while we integrate very well with the whole SD-WAN solution, we can actually extend this functionality very easily. Maybe you want to use the same type of policy, right? Or you want to uh, roll this out to a hundred or a thousand different users, right? Who are using corporate laptops, whether it's Windows or Mac, you can do so in a very quick pace, right? So whether you want to redirect them based on DNS layer or full proxy solution, or even integrate it with uh, solutions like Duo, where we bring to the table multi-factor authentication, you can do so very, very easily, right? So the, depending on your use case and your, uh, depending on your business case, there is a solution that would meet your requirement, right? That, that is uh, what I want to uh, bring as a key takeaway, right? So, just to close it off, the Cisco advantage is that we want to focus on a couple of key things. Firstly, we want to make it simple and easy to consume. So what we've done with the whole secure SD-WAN solution is that we brought um, to market a consistent packaging uh, as well as an integrated licensing so that it's easy for our customers to consume. Right. Depending on how you want to consume this, there are various methods as well. There are enterprise agreements where you could expand this functionality to a few other solutions as part of the Cisco portfolio. There are pre and post paid terms for uh, service providers. And if you're interested in any one of this, do speak to your uh, Cisco rep. We want to make it easy for our customers to deploy and manage. Right. So auto registration touch a little bit on that uh, with regards to SD-WAN as well as Umbrella. So SD-WAN side, that they use templates to, to ensure that it's easy for people to deploy. On the Umbrella side, um, we are a cloud-based solution. Again, it's seamless to deploy a policy. And when you bring these two things together, it really brings a lot to the table, right? Single touch auto provisioning, as well as integrated troubleshooting and service assurance, because you're getting a single solution from one vendor, right? There's one single throat to choke, and it makes your life a lot easier in terms of troubleshoot. Amazing user experience. We want, as I, as I mentioned a few times, security should not be a hindrance to productivity. So whether it's accessing, uh, going to applications, going, uh, doing it based on direct internet access, 
or adding a comprehensive security solution, we want to ensure that there is no latency and there is consistent performance and reliability, whether you are on a network, corporate network, or outside of a corporate network. And with regards to security, we are a best of breed solution. And uh, this is actually a testament to us because just last week, uh, I believe it was last week, CRN Tech Innovation actually presented Cisco as the winner in both these categories that we act, uh, have spoken to you about. Networking SD-WAN, we were the winner for SESI Networking, and you can see that uh, from the link over here. And for cloud security, they presented Cisco Umbrella as the winner for cloud security compare, uh, with, in comparison with a lot of other vendors that are out in the market today. Right? So really testament to what we are doing on the back end and the investment that we are putting forth in ensuring that our customers have the best possible solution to adopt. Thanks. With that, um, I think uh, we've, we've come to the end of this. So uh, we would, I would love to take any questions. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Sayed, and thank you, mm -hmm. Shamil, for the past one hour presentation and sharing. Okay, so right now we have come to our Q and A session. Um, okay, uh, Shamil, let me fire the first question to you, and um, and this is a very common question that I always receive from the from the ground. We we understand that uh, SASE is is a combination of uh, networking, is a convergence of networking and cloud security. But if due to my current environment, I'm not able to maybe implement both technology at the same time. What would be your recommendations or what would be the thought processes when we want to implement SASE? Should it be two technology at the same time or we can base on phase approach? Uh, Shamil? Yeah. Hi, hi, Kenai. Yeah. So yes, you you can take the phase uh, phase approach on that one. First, you can basically deploy it on SD WAN, and you can use the existing uh, uh, the security solution that you have in going to the internet. And then when the time comes, you can have a either upgrade the license into the DNA Premier or have a separate license uh, for the SASE or the the umbrella, and you can combine these two together. So it doesn't uh, it doesn't matter actually what time that you're going to deploy, but most importantly you need to have this DWAN solution up and running. You want to get a, a maximum uh, advantage on the uh, SESI solution. Okay, thanks, uh, Shamil. Uh, maybe Shai, Shai, this is a question to you. Yep. If if I if the customers already had a a security architecture in place. I think it's a those typical uh, data centers, uh, security blueprint, parameters type of firewall. How can it complement with this uh, cloud security to, to start the journey of SASE? I mean, in, in terms of planning, in terms of architecture, what are the thought through process? And how, okay. how do we bring the cloud security as part of the enterprise security architecture uh, blueprint? Okay, so I think that's uh... That's a very good question, right? Uh, firstly, it depends on the use case, right? So we always try to address our solutions uh, based on the use case that a customer wants to achieve. So while we know that um, a lot of security investment is already in place in a centralized location, more and more, uh, we are seeing people changes uh, going into this uh, IT digitization, either through people who are working remotely especially in this kind of uh, pandemic situation, or when they are adopting more and more cloud applications, right? So this brings a change, a fundamental change in terms of how people are deploying security as well, right? If you want to get the best out of your networking change, security needs to follow suit. Because if you have all your investment uh, deployed in a centralized location, and now you want to look at allowing cloud application adoption, you need to ensure that the security is in place so that people do not have to tunnel all their traffic back to that centralized location because it kind of defeats the purpose, right? So if you're looking at the use case, I would say that uh, in most of my customer conversations, the first thing that they are looking at is uh, with regards of protecting their remote workforce, right? Uh, the new normal today, uh, maybe you've heard of this term, the new normal so many times, but the new normal today is that people uh, would reduce the amount of employees that are coming back to that centralized location. 
They want to leverage on direct internet access, so either working from the branch sites or working from home, and continue this in the future. So security has to follow suit. And, that, and one of the best ways to do this is to adopt a cloud-based solution. Right? Uh, mm. Proxies are typically deployed centrally. Now with cloud-based proxy, you can actually have the same kind of enforcement wherever that user or device is. And uh, the next, maybe the next piece is again on uh, cloud application adoption. Right? So when people adopt to the cloud, the primary motivation of doing that um, is to uh, ensure better performance Right? So they can, they can change kind of the concept of how people need to uh, access those cloud applications. Right? More and more SaaS applications uh, are secure, and therefore you want to secure the access to that SaaS application. Right? Again, cloud security would complement this very well. Thank you, Sayed. Yeah. Okay, maybe this is uh, my, uh, my last question to maybe to both of you. Uh, maybe Sayed first. Okay. Um, okay, so another common question from the ground is that what is the evaluation criteria for, for, for the IT decision makers when they want to adopt the SASE journey? So if, um, if some, typically from, based on my experience, security folks will ask a very security centric type of question to, to, to the Cisco team. And mm -hmm. people from, folks from the network team will ask a very network centric type of question to, to us. So based on your experience, what will be the key key evaluation criteria when they, when, when they want to evaluate a SASE solution, be it from Cisco, be it from other, our other friendly competitors as well. Okay. So maybe Sayed and Shamil, you can share your thoughts from okay. based on experience and your engagement with your, with your surrounding uh, customers. Okay. Uh, let, 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 uh, Shamil, maybe I go first. Okay. Yeah, sure. So, okay. So uh, what, what I see is that, um, the interesting thing about what Gartner says with regards to SASE is that there is this convergence of solutions, both on the networking side and the security side. So that convergence is happening today uh, with SASE. But on the, what, what we've seen in, in reality is that in terms of the people managing these two solutions, they are not yet converging. But I think more and more, um, people are moving towards this direction. So my suggestion, or what, what I would recommend, is to take a phased approach, right? Based, um, again, related to the first question that was asked to Shami. So understand what is the final objective, right? And then build out phases on how you want to get there. Gartner also recommends that if you are looking at adopting SASE, it should be seen as part of a vision of where you want to uh, where you want to eventually reach instead of what you want to do today, just on today alone, right? So security and networking needs to come together. Uh, and when you are adopting a networking change, security needs to follow as well. And with more and more solutions that are being delivered to the cloud, customers can actually adopt this at ease and the integration points are already done. And that is why vendors like Cisco are actively investing and working on, making sure that these two things come together and it's easily adopted by our customers. Okay, thank you. Uh, how about Shamil? What, what's your opinion? Yeah, yes. So uh, I, I think we need to look into the few, few direction. Number one, actually, the solution that you deploy, uh, whether it's a best of the breed solution. Now, I mentioned earlier also, now, Majority of the ST WAN vendors or SASE vendors that we are talking about, uh, either they are leaning into the routing or they are leaning into the uh, firewalls, uh, security portion. There's no vendor today actually com uh, compare the, no vendor today has a base of the weed solution on a both direction. Now on Cisco, we had a Wiktel acquisition. So Wiktel was actually built, the Wiktel built the ST WAN solution in 2013 from the grounds up. And it's a solution actually that basically uh, what is in our uh, Cisco ST WAN today. And in addition to that, actually, we have a Cisco umbrella. That's a one of the best of the bit solution. You saw actually what Sai talked about and, uh, 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 and also the comparison with other vendors. So here you have the first of all, you have the, you have the, uh, you have the best of the bit solution on, a, on, on a both uh, aspect, on a networking side and, and also on the security side. And other thing that you also look into, what is this going to come in future? 
in the future, you will have a more on the uh, uh, more on the uh, networking side uh, related to the, uh, the LTE and also related to the branch computing, right? So it should be able to support on this that area also. And again, on the cloud environment, how do you connect it to the cloud? How do you basically maximize your cloud environment uh, connecting the traffic between your cloud providers? And also, the, uh, if it's a large organization, how do you basically integrate it on your LAN side and your data center side in, in a single portal that you'll be able to uh, find it out who are the users who log in and that log users will be uh, connected to the uh, data center uh, and you can give you a single policy from your uh, centralized portal. So it's not only the one portion that we are looking on the only SD-WAN or the SASE. Uh, this is a combination on SD-WAN and SASE. Also look into the what is in the future that you are going to do it on a, a SaaS, uh, the cloud environment, and also the uh, multi-cloud, uh, the uh, also the uh, multi-domain uh, environment. Yeah, and and uh, if if I can add something just on the cloud security stuff. Um, what we are seeing um, today in the marketplace is there are a lot of um, security vendors that are making acquisitions, lots of different acquisitions, right? So a lot of the vendors are moving and agreeing that they have to move into the space. Uh, but the most important thing when you are evaluating a cloud security vendor is to see how that whole architecture is done, right? Firstly, a SaaS-based solution shouldn't be something that is just moved from something that was on-premise to the cloud, right? Because it doesn't really work that way, right? Uh, it has to be born on the cloud. It has to be microservices oriented in terms of architecture uh, so that it can deliver new services in an agile model and be able to support the load globally. So the number of pops that you might have um, to ensure good performance and latency is also important, right? So a few key criteria that were actually called out by Gartner as well, uh, when you are evaluating which cloud security vendor you would want to go to, right? And while we uh, today speak about SD-WAN and uh, cloud security together, right, in the Cisco portfolio, I'd like to reiterate that they can also exist independently, right? So, um, if you have a choice of a specific SD-WAN solution, you can add in cloud security. Or if you have a choice of a cloud security vendor, you can add in the SD-WAN solution, both on uh, Vitella as well as uh, Mara. Okay, back to you, Ken Hao. Okay, thanks again, uh, Shamil and Sayed. So, uh, allow me to conclude uh, for today's webinar session. Uh, Sayed, please. Okay, so we, we spent around one hour in terms of sharing what forms the Cisco SASE, SASE, sorry about that, SASE solutions components, the SD-WAN and the cloud security, which is our Cisco umbrella. Having said that, the SASE journey doesn't end here. If you remember from the first part one of the webinars, uh, Danny, our APJC sales director for SD-WAN, shared about this one, journey to intent-based WAN. We understand that every customer is in different phase of their current architecture planning in terms of implementation. And uh, every customer will have different needs, will have different types of operation needs, business drivers, when they want to start the journey of SASE. It could it be just a standard, typical SASE, uh, SASE solutions, or they need to customize whether they need more of networking or more of cloud security. Okay? We, we understand that in the, in the current era, the dynamic is changing. In, in terms of the business, the way we did business. And even the recent, the past one year COVID situation has forced every vertical to change their, change their business model. And which, what does that mean? It means that they also need to change their, in terms of how do they, how do they do their business planning as well, from disaster recovery to the remote worker type of IT planning, right? So, SASE, journey to SASE is just a beginning. It's still a long way, okay? And for Cisco visions on uh, SASE, uh, Sayed, please, we, we don't just stop at what Gartner's definitions. Cisco has a breadth and depth product in terms of networking and security to really fully bring out the SASE uh, entire end-to-end -end visions, okay? And SecureX is definitely one of our key components. If 
everyone knows about SecureX. SecureX is an, our open and it's a cloud native platform that is, has a capability actually to, to connect uh, our Cisco integrated security portfolios together with your network infrastructure. Okay. So through, through this vision, through SecureX, our vision is that we want customers to get a unified access to security, networking, and even the IT applications from both the Cisco components together with your third party. Okay, so the objective actually is to streamline your entire deployments and operations, security and networking procedures. Okay, so this is the vision that I want to leave with everybody for, for today's uh, webinars as well. So right now we are near the top of our hours. Thank you again, Shamil and Syed. And most importantly, thank you to all our audience who spend their one hour time listening to us. But before I say goodbye, uh, final reminder again, our survey will pop up once the session ends. Please click continue on the pop-up warning in order to start the survey because we, we, we appreciate your feedback. We appreciate your, your, your survey kind of opinion so that we can improve and on the, our delivery to, to the audience or to the customer to yourself. Okay. So, so simply click on the link in the chat now and your input is definitely very important to us. So last but not least, terima kasih, salamat, and a very good thank you to everybody here. Thank you, everyone.